Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, we are looking at uh, certain uh, special topics in uh, compressible flows, uh, especially in high Mach number flows. And uh, we had discussed about hypersonic flow uh, in the previous uh, lectures. Mm, now, we come to another aspect which is called shock interactions. Uh, we have uh, discussed about uh, oblique shocks, their reflections from walls, mm, that is what we had discussed. Uh, in uh, uh, when we considered oblique shocks, mm, but uh, uh, if you consider a complex uh, body shaped body in a hypersonic flow, uh, it will have uh, many uh, features about it. Uh, for example, uh, this is uh, uh, an example that has been uh, given uh, due to uh, much earlier uh, during the time when hypersonic flows were being uh, evaluated. Uh, uh, this is uh, an X 51 uh, vehicle carrying an experimental setup for um, hypersonic research. Okay. So, uh, you see that this vehicle goes at very high Mach numbers uh, X 15, uh, then uh, but it has also many protrusions out uh, including say fins carrying some payload which is over here which is mounted using um, certain uh, pylons and these are the pylons here and this is the experimental uh, vehicle. So, uh, this body is not entirely uh, completely smooth. Um, then uh, what happens? So, when the flow is occurring uh, very high speed flow is occurring you will have shocks from various such protrusions over the body and uh, there will be an overall enveloping shock also and these uh, shock waves can interact with each other. Okay. So, for example, in this case uh, it is shown here uh, that there is a shock from this generator. So, a shock from uh, this uh, experimental vehicle over here can be formed here while the pylon itself can have a shock of this kind and these two shocks can interact with uh, each other. So, uh, when such uh, shock shock interaction occurs uh, then many unexpected uh, uh, phenomena like uh, sudden increase of heat transfer were observed and that caused uh, uh, severe damage. Uh, this is uh, a certain uh, damage that was caused in this particular case due to excessive heating and as a consequence uh, part of the structure just uh, melted away. So, in the initial stages when uh, for example, while doing spatial design and so on, uh, people were yet trying to grasp about all the complexities involved in hypersonic flow uh, or in high speed flow and uh, shock shock interaction phenomena came out to be an important uh, problem. Uh, so, people have looked at it uh, in great detail and uh, there are some interesting features there. Uh, these uh, continue to be studied uh, because there is still lot more to be understood here. Uh, so, uh, uh, the shock shock interactions can happen uh, for any kind of uh, uh, different shocks, uh, they may be of uh, the same kind or a different kind. Here, a kind means a family of shock which is left running or right running, uh, which we had discussed uh, in the case of oblique shock uh, reflections. Uh, what we say as left running is if you have an upstream velocity coming this way and the shock is of this nature, the flow turns 
towards itself so towards the shock and uh, this is having an angle uh, theta right. Uh, so, yeah. So, now this kind of a shock uh, turns the flow from the upstream direction it is turning the flow towards uh, the right and uh, this shock is known as a right running shock. right running shock while on the other hand if you had a shock of this in the nature and this is the incoming flow it turns the flow towards the left. So, this is known as left running shock. So, um, all other factors even if theta remains the same just the fact that it is turning the flow in different directions become uh, important and when such shocks. Uh, interact they may be of the same kind both right running shocks or both left running shocks or opposite kind it which means uh, a right running and a left running shock interact. Uh, then uh, different kinds of flow features are produced ok and also um, you can have a combination of subsonic and supersonic uh, velocities downstream of such uh, shock interactions. So, to study these uh, shock interactions uh, the pressure deflection diagrams are uh, effectively used. So, this becomes a very nice uh, exercise to understand um, how to apply uh, uh, the pressure deflection diagrams in the case of multiple shocks. So, uh, Edney uh, carried out uh, uh, Barry Edney at uh, uh, Aeronautical Research Institute of Sweden, uh, he carried out a uh, set of uh, studies and therefore, uh, after those studies he was able to classify the different uh, shock interactions into six kind and uh, he studied the interaction of a bow shock uh, ahead of a uh, body a blunt body. So, this bow shock is an ideal candidate because it has various regions where uh, the shocks have different strength ok. Uh, far away from the nose uh, the shock is essentially an oblique shock uh, while near the nose they are strong oblique shocks and there is subsonic flow here. Uh, at a certain point there is a sonic uh, line and uh, the flow becomes supersonic beyond the sonic line. Uh, so, uh, within the sonic circle or sonic line uh, the Mach numbers are uh, less than 1, but beyond the sonic line Mach numbers are greater than 1. So, you have both strong shocks and weak shocks in a uh, bow shock. Uh, then what he did was use a uh, uh, shock generator a simple wedge and then create a shock and let it impinge on this bow shock at different points and therefore, produce uh, different shock interactions and uh, later he found that there are six types of interactions. One uh, mm, shocks uh, the interactions of shocks which are relatively weak which occurs in regions 1 and 2 and 5 and 6 ok. 1 and 2 are interactions of uh, uh, shock waves of opposite kind that is um, this is a, uh, a right running shock while the incoming shock is left running while uh, the 5 and 6 are interactions of shock uh, with uh, which have the same family which is both are um, in this case both are uh, left running ok. Now, uh, there are strong shocks in the regions 3 and 4 um, and uh, interactions of shock in this uh, strong shock region result in uh, different kind of phenomena than the other ones. Mm, so, mm, there are six different uh, types uh, that are produced we will just uh, go through the physical flow features of these interactions. Uh, why this is important is uh, in all these interactions what we find uh, is that due to the shock shock interaction. Uh, there are shocks um, resulting shocks from the interaction which impinge on the body ok 
or in the case of uh, uh, the uh, uh, type uh, 3 that is region 3 and region 4 uh, interactions we have shear layers impinging on the body or there is a supersonic jet that impinges on the body. Uh, when such uh, discontinuities or supersonic jets they impinge on the body they can cause uh, uh, severe uh, heating of the body at those uh, locations. Uh, so, that is actually uh, a, a consideration that has to be carefully considered while designing such uh, bodies. So, first uh, let us just take a look at um, shock interactions happening um, uh, with weak shocks away from the sonic circle um, beyond the sonic circle the flow is their uh, shocks are relatively weak mm. type 1 is a relatively weak shock so they are called as type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 type 5 and type 6 in type 3 and 4 uh, the uh, shock interacts within the sonic circle where flow is subsonic after that so, let us look at shocks first we look at type 1 interaction here uh, two shocks interact uh, of opposite kind. So, uh, this is a left running shock S 1 while S 2 is a uh, right running shock ok they interact they are relate both of the shocks are relatively weak. Mm, so, as a consequence there are two other shocks that are formed T 1 and uh, T 2 over here. Now, the way to analyze them is to consider uh, different oblique shocks this is region in 0 or you can consider the free stream. Uh, the flow passes through the first uh, shock undergoes a deflection and uh, it, it gets to region 1 thereafter it goes to uh, region 3 ok. Similarly, uh, in the uh, upper half you get region 2 and then region 4. Then the boundary conditions at region 4 uh, is that both these uh, uh, velocities at region uh, 3 and region 4 V 3 uh, is parallel to V 4 ok. So, they have a parallel uh, flow and uh, there is no uh, solid surface present here uh, therefore, uh, P 3 should be equal to uh, P 4 they are all oblique shocks therefore, the flow will be uniform in these regions. So, only these conditions can be applied V 3 need not be equal to V 4. So, what we get here is actually a slip line slip line across which velocities can be different different temperatures can be different entropies will be different because they have different uh, 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 shock strengths, but um, uh, the velocities will be parallel to each other and pressures uh, will be uh, the same. So, this is the boundary condition that can be applied and uh, we can uh, then draw simple shock polars uh, for this uh, we can find out the base uh, shock these are um, scaled um, uh, shock polars plotted in actual uh, coordinates and uh, this uh, black line represents the upstream flow which is having Mach number of 4.6. Uh, the two shocks they are represented by these uh, shock polar. So, you can see here this is one kind of a shock while the other one is in the opposite kind and they both intersect at this point uh, which is uh, 3 comma 4. So, uh, here there is a Schlieren of such weak interaction. So, you have uh, one shock uh, the other shock coming from here two other shocks are produced and the slip line is also visible faintly in this uh, Schlieren. Uh, this actually the main uh, point here is this shock this transmitted shock over here can impinge on the body and uh, there it can produce a spike of uh, heat transfer pressure and so on ok. Now, uh, when we uh, increase the strength of the shock uh, further. So, from type 1 if we go towards type 2 which are stronger shocks uh, then uh, it may not be possible uh, 
uh, to have uh, such uh, just two shocks coming out because uh, we know that all uh, shock polars if you take there is a maximum flow deflection that can be done uh, which is uh, uh, somewhere around this region. So, around this region. So, if uh, the flow deflection produced by the flow uh, due to the shocks when they interact, uh, when they interact if it is not possible to produce uh, such a deflection uh, then uh, we get a uh, max stem instead here. This is very much similar to Mach reflection that we uh, discussed in uh, case of uh, reflection of shock waves and here you find that there are two uh, triple points. Mm, so, this is the first uh, shock here coming in there is a triple point for it there is a transmitted shock T, T1 over here and a max stem here. Similarly, corresponding to shock 2 you have another shock T2 here and a max stem associated with it and uh, uh, in between these two regions you have two slip lines actually. So, you have two slip lines in between which you have subsonic flow. Uh, these slip lines can respond uh, and uh, later they can form even a, a sort of a shape like a CD nozzle and um, this uh, Mach number which is less than 1 can get accelerated further to higher Mach numbers. Uh, but here uh, this is a subsonic region which is um, separate uh, from supersonic regions in uh, 2, 4, similarly 1, uh, 3. So, if we uh, try to draw uh, a, a shock polar for such uh, interactions, we see it is possible to do that and here you find that this particular shock polar which is for uh, Mach number 1.44 corresponding to a type 2 interaction does not have a uh, solution where it intersects with any of the other uh, shock polars, but only at along the main shock polar. So, which is at this point. So, you have the two points here 3, 5 and um, 4, 6 and this is a Schlieren of such a uh, shock interaction where you can see the shocks here and you can see uh, there is a region very dark region uh, which corresponds to um, the um, subsonic uh, region. So, um, type 2 interactions happen when with a uh, weak oblique shock and a stronger oblique shock. Uh, they are of opposite families. Now, we come and take a look at uh, again interactions of the weak kind not in within the sonic circle. Uh, we look at uh, type 6 interaction which occurs of with the same family. If you take a look at uh, such interactions type 6 you see that there is al already one shock. So, this is a 4 body shock C1 this is the other shock C2 they are of both of the same family and they uh, interact at this particular point. Now, uh, what happens here is that you have uh, uh, the if you take a streamline over here it passes through two shocks while a streamline up here it passes uh, through only one shock uh, and if the strengths are uh, uh, if you take the proper strengths, you find uh, that the pressure in 4 is larger than pressure in 3. Okay. So, pressure in 4 will be larger than pressure in 3. So, as a consequence uh, a, an expansion fan develops and uh, that makes pressures equal in 6 and 3. So, P 6 equal to P 3 and V 3 is parallel to V 6. So, this is the boundary condition that we have there um, in uh, type 6 interaction which can also be uh, plotted uh, in a shock polar here you it represents a uh, type 6 interaction where th this is point 1 uh, which is uh, uh, the point where uh, 
the shock uh, the point 1 is corresponding to here it is point 2 there is a slight uh, difference in uh, the kinds of uh, nomenclatures that is followed. So, point 2 corresponds to the region point 1 corresponds to region 2 while uh, the region that is point 2 is here uh, in point region 4 here and at that point an expansion fan develops therefore pressure decreases again and then we get the points uh, 3 and 4 which is uh, lying at this along the slip line. So, uh, and here is a Schlieren of the same in this case expansion fans what you see here they are expansion fans uh, this dark region these expansion fans can impinge on the uh, body. So, uh, but these are relatively weak interactions type 6 then we come to type 5 interaction in a type 5 interaction is uh, so just like there was a distinction between type 1 and type 2 as the strength of shock increased uh, similarly in type 5 here uh, the strength of shock has uh, increased compared to type 6. Uh, there, therefore, as a consequence again here you get a shock S5 in between and uh, this fall, uh, creates a zone which is bounded by two uh, slip lines and there is a supersonic flow. So, now what happens is you will have expansion fans uh, which are bouncing off uh, two slip lines creating a kind of a, a jet here. So, you get a kind of jet in this place, okay, but this jet is away from the body. So, it just curls away from the body, it does not come close to the body. The body is uh, actually interacted with this by shock, uh, this shock interacts with the body here. So, uh, this is type 5 uh, interaction uh, which can also be seen in uh, Schlieren's that are shown here. Mm here in this region you have uh, uh, the two shocks and you have uh, the uh, region with containing the jet and the slip line is smudged in this case, but essentially it is uh, just the uh, shock wave that interacts with the um, this shock which interacts with the body and the corresponding uh, shock polars can be drawn and we can understand shock interactions very well with uh, um, shock polars. So, this is one application where uh, shock polars can be used to a good uh, extent. It is very difficult to solve all these uh, uh, algebraic equations where we get a system which is quite large and having many constraints. So, uh, if we plot it graphically it is easier to understand them. So, in type 5 interaction uh, we get uh, a uh, couple of slip lines and uh, uh, a sort of a jet that occurs uh, between them. Now, if we move uh, to uh, the interaction shock shock interaction uh, with uh, which is very close to the sonic circle within the sonic circle what happens here is uh, that uh, the uh, in this is in region 3 and region 4 they are called type 3 and type 4 here uh, the bow shock is of very high strength strength is larger the flow downstream of the bow shock is uh, uh, subsonic okay so that is quite different from the cases in type 1 type 2 or type 5 type 6 which had supersonic flows uh, downstream. Uh, so, they produce certain uh, special features uh, which create a lot of uh, changes on the body and uh, as a result they are of Im immense importance when looking at bodies. Let us consider uh, the type 3 interaction in uh, type 3 interaction this is the impinging shock S1 this is the bow shock S2. Okay. And here a slip line is formed between two regions which is first uh, region 2 which is downstream of a sh strong shock. So, subsonic flow here M 2 is less than 1, but region 3 uh, which is downstream of an oblique shock. 
So, in region 3 Mach number is uh, greater than 1, uh, a slip line is formed which intersects the solid wall. Uh, now, this uh, uh, supersonic flow here uh, which is Mach number is greater than 1 uh, has to be turned to an angle at the solid wall as a consequence another shock S3, S3 develops over here. So, this is the flow feature you have a slip line or a shear uh, layer impinging on the um, solid wall. Uh, therefore, uh, you can get uh, an increase of uh, heat transfer at that uh, location followed by a, a production of a shock wave also. So, uh, this is the flow picture for uh, Schlieren of such an image. So, here you can see uh, these are the shocks and here you have the slip line originating over here and impinging on the um, body around this region. Okay. And the corresponding shock polars it is drawn for the triple point uh, TP1 and point 2 and 3 are uh, located here. Now, we can go to the most uh, special case uh, which is the type 4 interaction. Uh, in type 4 interaction the interaction happens very close to the uh, stagnation region. Uh, so, much uh, stronger shocks and if we compare it with type 3, in type 3 there is a shear layer or a slip line which comes and interacts with the wall and uh, uh, in order to turn the flow um, that is uh, turn the flow parallel to the wall a shock S3 develops. If the angle of this solid wall is increased further then uh, there may not be a uh, uh, attached solution for S3 which is attached to the wall. Uh, in such uh, scenario uh, the um, type 4 interaction forms. In type 4 interaction there is uh, the formation of S3 over here you get two regions which in which case this is Mac, uh, region 2 where it is subsonic flow similarly region 4 uh, which is subsonic flow. So, here it is subsonic flow here also it is subsonic flow, but in between this there is a region 3 which is having a supersonic flow and it is bounded by uh, slip lines. Okay. And uh, then you can have shock waves. Um, and expansion fans uh, reflecting off these two uh, slip lines which are constant pressure boundaries. This is uh, very much similar to a uh, supersonic jet and this can impinge on the uh, solid wall uh, create very significant increase in uh, pressure as well as uh, heat transfer. Uh, that is the reason why this uh, type of interaction is very important uh, from the perspective of uh, uh, controlling the heat transfer on uh, bodies. So, so, we have seen that there are 6 uh, types of interactions uh, very interesting different kinds of flow features produced when uh, the oblique shocks and oblique shocks interact with uh, each other. Uh, they are important in the uh, context of looking at uh, designing bodies uh, because normally we consider uh, that stagnation point is where the highest temperatures are produced and as a consequence high heat flux is produced. But if shock interactions take place there may be other regions uh, where these interactions can produce uh, significant heating and that has to be considered uh, carefully. Uh, so, uh, this was a an again another uh, uh, brief introduction into uh, such uh, uh, interesting flow features uh, as shock shock interactions. Uh, they can be uh, studied using uh, Schlieren methods as well as drawing uh, shock polars and understanding uh, them and their uh, flow features. Mm. So, uh, they are also found in many other flow scenarios uh, which we will see uh, soon that uh, if we consider uh, the viscous effects at the wall then we always have to consider 
a layer which is close to the wall where viscous effects are important which is boundary layer and when we come to uh, supersonic flows there are always uh, shocks that are present and when uh, shock interacts with the boundary layer uh, then what happens uh, again uh, set of interesting flow features are uh, produced uh, we can uh, take a look at that in the coming classes so uh, thank you